Hi! Hey everybody! Videos and veggies stars Ant. And the cat. And uh, we're here talking about The Incredibles. Is it as good as you remember it? It is. Way to give it away! I'm just answering a question honestly. <laughs> <laughs> so we're here to talk about... Yes, it's that good. Yes. Okay. But we're going to talk about it extensively though. We're just yeah. not going to the... say it is and be done with it. Yes. And um, what are we eating? We are eating some yummy tofu sliders. Let's take a bite. Here, Here we, we go. go. I'm gonna mm. Okay. That's good. It straight up tastes like chicken. Like we're eating oh, it does. chicken. I think it's because the cheese on top of it that's melted on top of the tofu. Mm. I, I almost got one of these up my nose, actually, just right now. I told him. I'm sorry. Please take out the toothpicks. <laughs> toothpicks are keeping it together. Anyways, it's really good. It's yummy. The Incredibles. We're talking about The Incredibles. Yes. So, mm. we watched it again because The Incredibles 2 is coming out. And. On June 15th. Which is. Sorry, I have food in my mouth now. <laughs> um, June 15th is mine and Anthony's 11th year anniversary of being together. Not married, but since we've been dating. Mm -hmm. So. Mm -hmm. Five yay. years together, five, way to five celebrate. years married. Yeah, because we love this movie. Oh my gosh, definitely my favorite Pixar. Um, one, of, one of my top five favorite Pixar. So I feel like a Pixar connoisseur. But your other one is Ratatouille. I love Ratatouille, which is With another Brad Bird film. Another Brad Bird film. <laughs> shaking it. We're shaking the camera. We're shaking the camera. Um, With excitement. With excitement. Yeah, Brad Bird is totally awesome. Heart directed Bradford. this. Directed Mission Impossible Ghost, Ghost Protocol, mm -hmm. which I love. Um, Iron Giant. Mm -hmm. And um, Tomorrowland. 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 So yeah. Well versed in Disney ways. Mm -hmm. All right. Well, I'm gonna start it off. Um, my favorite incredible, uh, incredible um, character is actually Elastigirl. You know, I try to do the swoop today with an homage to the gorgeousness and all that <laughs> to Elastigirl, Mrs. Incredible. Um, I think I feel like she's such a key element in this movie because yeah. she. You just you just love her so much because she's sassy and powerful and a wonderful woman in the beginning and she just brings so much of this playful banter. I'm strong, I'm a feminist, I got this. And then she gets married and she loses herself a little bit and I can totally relate to that. You know, I was working a lot and was just putting my 40 hours in and then now i have three kids and my son and all my kids need a lot of attention mm -hmm. but especially our middle son needs a lot of attention he's autistic or mildly mm -hmm. autistic and now i am home and i don't feel like i've lost all of myself because i'm still me but i've definitely have lost like feel like i lost some of me and her arc is just so beautiful i think we're gonna see movie. a lot more of her in incredibles too even. yes because this yes. one is kind of about Bob's story. Right. Um, Mr. Incredible. And I think the next one, a lot of it is going to center around. And focus on her. On her. Yeah. Which is really cool. So that, and you know, the arc of her getting back her mojo. Mm -hmm. You know, she got her groove back. And Edna helped her get there. And um, Edna Mode. Edna Mode. Edna Mode. Edna Mode is actually voiced by the director, Brad Bird. He auditioned a bunch of people, and nobody could do it just the way he... He wanted it done, so he just did it himself. Because she's actually supposed to be part like um, European and also Asian. Yeah, you can see that. She's supposed to you be. Can see that. That's supposed to be sort of her background, mm -hmm. you know. Um, she's an homage to um, some very famous designers. Um, do you know the specific designer who I'm talking? Like, she looks like specifically one designer, and we didn't research that before we started, so I'm sorry, I don't have it. But, I don't know. I'm sorry. Um, mm -hmm. We'll throw it in the comments or something. But yeah, she's so wonderful. She's such a, she's so expressive, you know? She's not afraid to tell people what she thinks. She sort of is who Elastigirl wants to be, you know? Like, she is free and open. She tells yep. everybody what she thinks, and she does what she wants. She uses her skills. She's not afraid to. She's not afraid to say when she is unhappy with her state. 
Um, in the beginning, she talks about, you know, designing for models and being unhappy. And she, you know, isn't afraid to stand up to superheroes. You know, like she, she tells Mr. Incredible, no capes. It's awesome. Um, and I believe they actually, that one of the reasons that they did that was because at the time, 2004, capes were really hard to animate. In fact, all the hair you'll see is very stagnant, except when it really has to move, like in the wind or in the water or something like that. Usually it's very stagnant. It has a lot of character, like Dash's hair always looks like it's moving. It's like Right, it looks like, like little lightning strikes. That's what it looks like to me moving yeah. back. And then like Violet's hair was such a huge deal, right? Yeah. Violet's hair, they put so much effort into it and they were so concerned by the time the movie was coming out, they almost scratched her they hair. They almost scratched her and hair. And everyone was like, Oh my God. And yeah. her hair is so important to her. Look, you know, just with me having a little bit of cover, like a little mm -hmm. bit of mystery. Like a violet um, Helen mix. Well, no. So, you know, the, her reveal, her coming, blossoming into herself, growing into herself yeah. by, you know, just keeping your hair away from your face and being willing to be exposed. Yeah. You know, it's, yeah. just, it's just huge, and especially in her age. Yeah. You know? Okay, can we talk about the color scheme and the lighting? For a second. This is his favorite thing to talk about when it comes to this movie. He's so lighting is so good in this movie. The lighting is so good in this movie. It's so like poignant and it has a purpose and the lighting color scheme has a purpose. Mm. And you know, in the beginning everything's in that perfect like twilight thing, um, when it's almost sunset. In fact, you know, Helen when she's Elastigirl, she sort of flips off into the sunset. So everybody has that beautiful golden, you know, it's the golden years. It's the you know, um, <clears throat> what are they, the glory days, the glory, you know? Everything sort of days, epitomizes that days, in know? that opening scene mm -hmm. where, you know, before they get married, that whole opening scene. And then you jump into after they have to stop being superheroes and the first thing you see, we, were, we looked at it, we're like, oh my gosh, look at that composition. The first thing you see is um, Bob, Mr. Incredible, as an insurance salesman just like typing away at his desk and everything is so like muted tones and cold um, color, uh, cool concrete, colors, just concrete, co um, so cold um, fluorescent lighting, you know, everything's very generic. It doesn't really come from anywhere, just sort of up and, you know, from up above and very oppressing, you know, and then you, it really emphasizes when stuff is really dynamic. Like mm -hmm. my, my favorite lighting is when Helen and Edna are in the um, in the design studio, you know? And Edna is saying like, do you know where Robert is? Do you know where your husband is? And there's this blue light coming from the display area where she was showing all of the costumes, but the rest of it is all dark. So you just see this like blue and dark on Helen's face as she's sort of like, just like realizing that she really doesn't know her family like she thought she did. She doesn't know her life like she thought she did. And it's just beautiful. Mm. Oh my gosh, it's so beautiful. <laughs> uh, and yeah, I love the lighting, it's just so All good. All right, so I guess I'll talk about my two geek out moments when it comes to lighting composition. The flaming fish. How amazing. <laughs> <laughs> like the fish that look like flames and they light like a them. fireplace. So like a fireplace, like a fireplace. Behind that Edna, is... behind Edna in her house. I mean, her house, like when I, you know the beauty about rewatching movies is going back and looking at details that you've probably really never paid attention to or you start to see how the reason why you love these movies is because pardon me they're reflected in other directors that you like like i love wes anderson and the poignancy of color and there's a lot of poignancy of color you know when it comes to their clothes i mean it's the late 60s mustard yellows these beiges these you know light teal greens and then Boom, their costume is bright red mm -hmm. and black and yellow. When mm -hmm. everything goes to good, you go from like this low saturated color to this jungle, this giant, vibrant, giant, vibrant just like everything is like just so saturated in color. And it's just such a huge, huge change, a mm -hmm. huge arc. And you know, and then it's the, the place where they come alive. Yes. You know what yes. I mean? The, when they the finally color come scene, together. When they finally come together as a family. The color brand, the, the lighting is vibrant, you know, like it's all just uh, very full and you know, they're they're coming alive in that mm -hmm. island. That island brings them to life. It's full of life. It mm -hmm. has, you know, mechanical birds, but it also has a lot of bugs and trees and plant life, you know. And the water and then just there were the so water. many times Oh my gosh. We would shout logic. <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> like the moments that 
that like when Dash is running and then he because the one bad guy is coming and then he runs the other way and then he's just like well then I'm just gonna go down yeah I'm just gonna fall down Brad Bird and Pixar it's in logical. general because um I'm a Cal Arts alum and Cal mm -hmm. Arts specific one of the reasons that it was kind of created by Disney was to churn out animators and they're so talented in how they do it they they um, talk about composition, they talk about story, that, you know, uh, I actually had a roommate who was an animator and he had all of these um, uh, templates for understanding how to create a uh, strong composition in a frame. So take for example, when Bob is in um, the office that he works in in the beginning, there's a moment where you sort of see the office from above and he sort of sticks his head out above all the other cubicles. Well, you'll see that it's all just sort of a, a plane of cubicles. You know, it's the full frame is covered with cubicles and then he's got the one pillar on the side. And that makes a cool composition because if it was pillars everywhere or things were just kind of jumbled around, it wouldn't be as interesting to watch. But you just see, you just see like plane of cubicles, right. one pillar, you know, and that's just one example of how they understand both look because the, the look of this film is so strong, so beautiful. Very, very strong. And also understanding story and that when she said logic she's talking about how brad bird like will take a situation and he will follow it to the logical end like the next thing that would okay so what, what the, the thing that we were talking about was bob comes home from a really crappy day at the office and he you know is all cramped in his tiny little car that's too small for him and he steps up and he slips on the skateboard well, he's Mr. Incredible, so he's going to crunch the car, and he crunches a piece of the car. Right. He's like, oh, great. And then he closes the door, and the door won't close because he crunched the car frame. So he gets really mad, says so he slams it, and it breaks the car window. And he's like, oh, my gosh. So he's Mr. Incredible, so he lifts up the car. And, of course, there are people around, <laughs> and, it's like... and it freaks the person out, and he doesn't have anything to do. So I was like, I guess I'll just put this down and walk away, you know? <laughs> and that's logic. But it's funny, you know? Yeah, it's it's, it's, it's so co great. combining two elements that don't work well together, a tiny car and a gigantic Mr. Incredible, and just letting them run amok, seeing what happens logically between the two of them. And that makes for great storytelling, great moments. You know, Dash is running really fast, but he runs through bees and he's a little kid, so he's gonna care about that, as opposed to an adult would be like, I'm running for my life, I don't care. He's gonna be like, Pah, this is so gross, you know, like. Making rookie mistakes like, woohoo, I'm alive. Yeah, and he would give away his position so they would find him, you know? But then the best example of logic is the water. So good. He okay. runs on the water. Right. And then um, he is... Runs so fast, he's like a jet ski. He's yeah. just like a, a jet ski running across the water. And, it's, and you get a taste for it for when he is using his... When um, Helen is like that little boat that mm -hmm. Violet's sitting in and he's kicking on the water, mm -hmm. but he's supported. So that's why he is, t you're surprised with him when he's able to run on that water. You feel their joy. You feel their joy every time they accomplish, the kids accomplish something that they've never accomplished yeah. before. Especially with things like Violet, mm -hmm. where she struggled with it. And her mother does a beautiful thing. She apologizes to her daughter for asking for too much in a moment. Yeah. It's this movie shows parent to child and and wife to husband dynamic in such a realistic way that is absolutely gorgeous like they're arguing they're arguing about life things like you know what are you doing to our family you need to care about our family or when uh dash okay it's funny maybe i know a lot of people don't think this way but when she talks about him going the fourth grade to the fifth grade and mr incredible calls it you know like it's meteorocrity he's like no it's just you know it's a it's not about you it's about them mm -hmm. and a part of me was like yeah it's kind of like weird that they're celebrating him going from the fourth yeah. grade into the fifth grade mm -hmm. but that's also an act of selfishness and at that time mr incredible is very selfish he he, he He's selfless in the fact that he's sacrificing all of this for his family, but all he cares about is the past. The past. He does not care about being there in the moment with his family yeah. because he is so like desperate and to relive his old days. Catherine's talked about how much he relates with Helen and her struggle. I definitely relate to Bob Parr. I mean, we used to be living in Los Angeles. I was an actor in LA for a long time. Mm -hmm. And I miss that life. I miss all of my, you know, actor and filmmaker friends, but we have a family and that is, <laughs> it's such a 
bigger adventure. And maybe we'll get back to it someday and maybe not, but we refuse to let go of our happiness mm -hmm. where we're at, you know, and that's a really great lesson. It's a hard lesson, but you know, the fact that they try and deal with that, like difficult lesson in this movie is wonderful. It's, it feels very real. It's like logic. You know what I mean? You, you find that real gem and you, you follow it, you see where it leads. So I, I thought that was so great. So yeah. Um, anything else you want to talk about with this? Um, the voices were so great. We realized that the, okay, Ratatouille, if you love Ratatouille, the voice of Linguini, the lead dude, is the voice of the teacher. Bernie. Bernie, <laughs> don't Bernie me. me. <laughs> that he puts the tack, that Dash puts the tack on his seat. Um, so I, I love that. And um, Wallace Shawn, the boss. Uh, um, I mean, they're just, I mean, you feel, you feel every performer, yeah. every actor put their whole heart in this. I mean, yeah. obviously, one of the most epic scenes of this entire movie is between Frozone and Honey at the end of the movie. I used to write for Disney, and literally, I have experienced two people like walking down in DCA, this California Adventure, saying those lines when Frozone was coming, and I was like, I'm so thankful that I was on my lunch break walking back to where did they like make be. frozone participate or are they just doing no, it in front of them frozone is is you know he keeps silent. he keeps to himself yeah he keeps to himself yeah. all right but they were doing it and frozone was acting out like you know <laughs> it's my soup suit and it was <laughs> awesome it was just so awesome and people just love that scene because yeah. it's like <laughs> Real is logical. It's so, it's you know so what I mean? You have a so huge weird. attack going on outside, but you have and she's a oblivious. relationship she's going oblivious on inside. Because it you doesn't matter. I mean? Her night is about to get ruined. Exactly. That's what uh, matters. A normal husband and wife trying to have a conversation about getting ready and the public being in danger from a giant attacking robot. Mm -hmm. You know, those two things combined is creates a beautiful, you know, logic to follow and it's Okay. Like my super suit. So just gonna wrap this up and I just want to say one thing I would highly highly recommend re-watching this movie again before you go see number two mm -hmm. and try to look for things that you never noticed before yeah. like one thing I picked up or two things I picked up mm -hmm. on was the fact that Bob's office space cubicle yes though tiny was even tinier because a quarter of the pillar was carved up in his space which makes it even more claustrophobic. Oh yeah. Which is He's awful. got the crappy cubicle. Mm -hmm. Oh man. I, I wonder if he had a good one and then his boss got so mad at him, he put him in the crappy cubicle. That's <laughs> I what would, I thought. I would, I would, I so what's your favorite that. moment? Put it Look in the comments. It. What is your favorite, favorite moment, moment in the Incredibles? Or something new that you, that you, or something new that you didn't experienced mm -hmm. that you didn't, the first time you watched it. Let us yeah. know because we love to hear from you guys. Yeah. Yeah, All right. and we'll, it'll just give us more chance to talk about this movie because, you know, we love to talk about this movie, so there you go. Well, thank you guys so much for watching. Please Thanks. like and subscribe, and we'll catch you Follow next time. Follow us on time. Instagram, the cat and the ant. Instagram, Twitter, yeah, at the cat and the ant. Um, Twitter, at cat and ant, and on Facebook. All right. Good night. Signing off. Yeah. Take Bye. care.